Alright, it's about uh, 6 a.m. here, and it's, uh, let me see, 6.02, Sunday, January 29th, and we're waiting for our buddy Mike. Uh, we got another, uh, oh, look, we got, got frost on top of the cars. What's the temperature here? Huh. 33. 33 degrees. Alright. Alright, smells like we got skunk day last, tonight, last night. Stinks out here. Alright. Waiting for our buddy Mike and uh, when we see him, we'll let you know and uh, he'll give us some details about where we're going. Good road trip. Good road trip today. I think you guys are going to like it. Alright. Here's something, and I see some headlights. And at this time of the morning, it's odd, so it's got to be my boy. Oh, yep, I hear the trailer. Here he comes. Right on time. Here he comes. You think he's waving? Yeah. I heard you coming all the way down the street. I heard the thing rattling. No, it doesn't rattle that bad. Well, at 6.30 in the morning it does. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so uh, where are we going, buddy? Going to Montville, New Jersey. Montville, New Jersey. That's, that's 100 miles away from here. Yeah, yeah, it's up north in the mountains of New Jersey. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful up there. Mm -hmm. Almost like the Poconos in Pennsylvania. Yeah, right. Matter of fact, it is. It's just on the opposite side of the river. <laughs> All right. That's actually uh, not too far from Lake Patcon. Yeah. All right. Well, let's uh, let's get some things together and uh, we'll get going. What am I? What am I hearing? Is that the that the, the train? No. What? What's that? That's either the train or the the river. Oh, foghorn. Yeah, something. the foghorns are from the buoys and stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing how much how, how much. Uh, Sound that could be that could be the horn. That could be the train. Huh. Isn't that something? I always like those next to the <laughs> And you're not even you're not even next to. I, I'm telling you. It's got to be three miles away. Four miles away. Yeah, yeah. It's probably probably at least at least two miles as the crow flies. Right. All right. We'll see you guys in a couple minutes. All right. What do you say, buddy? You ready to go? Looks like it's time to move now. All right. Wait. Wait. Ah. Uh, Don't go nowhere. Hang on. Hang on. All right. Let's oh. go. Alright. 100 mile journey. Oh, look, it's starting to get light out. Alright, let's go, buddy. Let's get out of here. Alright, we're on a Jersey Turnpike and we're just about to get off here. And uh, up there on the hill, there is like an old train station. I don't know how well you guys are going to see it because I can't see it myself. A bunch of old cars. A bunch of old box cars and big pole. tankers. Yeah. yeah, look, there's a caboose, a couple cabooses. Wow. Huh. Anyway, yeah, the guy that we're going to, he, uh, we mentioned that place to him. He goes, oh, yeah, he goes, I'm working on, uh, he was working on one of their engines or was something. Was it a trolley or something, I think? Yeah, 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 yeah that's what it was. The Raging River. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, sorry if the, the camera's bumping a little. Oh, look at the old factory, Mike. This yeah. is 287 we're on, by the way. Just, uh, Here we go, Main Street to Boonton. Yeah. Oh, I made this mistake last time. This isn't our oh. I did this exact thing oh, last time. Oh my god, Mike! Um, <laughs> we're getting distracted. Sorry. Oh. Sorry, guy behind me. Here oh, well. We go. This is our exit. Yeah, like I was saying, sorry about the bounce you can, but uh, Mike is hauling a trailer, and once he hits a little bump and that thing starts uh, bouncing and everything, it, it sends uh, everything out of whack here, so. All right. Yeah, we're not too far from uh, where we're going, so uh, we'll uh, we'll see you guys. Oh, look, we're gonna get off the thing, get off the main road, and right into a development here. Little town, yeah. Yeah, little town, USA. All right. And uh, we're probably gonna start seeing. Uh, we're probably gonna start hitting the mountains soon. So. Uh, oh yeah, I think right when we make this turn, we go up a steep hill. Yeah. 
Sometimes you can't tell in, on the camera, you know, how steep something is. But uh, I remember going through one area, Mike, and there's a lot of rock formations, you know, a lot of glaciers here at one time. And almost every house you look at looks like it was, uh, oh yeah, look at that, look at a big, big hill up here. But anyway, uh, you look at the houses, and the houses are actually made from the stones that came out of their yard. So if we see something like that, we'll... Uh, We'll show it to you. We don't want to put too much uh, filler in this because uh, it's going to be a long video, you know. And, and the place we're going to has a lot, a lot of interesting stuff. So uh, I right, we'll, sh we'll show you something when we see it. All right, yeah, we're going up these hills here and everything. And it's funny, I did, you know, I, I was telling you about the the stone up here and everything. Down around our way, we we call it river rock because that's that's what you get out of the river, you know, big stones, but. Every one of these houses has a brick wall with them, them stones. Right there. Here's one right here. Cemetery. And like I say, some of the, some of the houses, it looked like, every, almost every one of these houses has a, has a, oh yeah, them round brick. Here's one the guy has his, uh, oh yeah, look at them all. Yeah, look at them all. Every, everyone has it. Hey, oh, look at this one, Mike. Free, free block, free brick. You know what? You didn't see last time, Mike, but we passed a, a gas station and a guy. Look at them. Look at them all. I know. <laughs> it's crazy. Look at this going up. Every house. Oh, man. Look at this one. Wow. I feel like I'm in, uh, where's, where's Fred Flintstone live? Yeah, Fred but, uh, Flintstone? Yeah. <laughs> bedrock. I feel, like, I feel like I'm in bedrock. Huh. Wow. Imagine trying to get up this place in the snow. Ay, ay, ay. I've never seen so many brick walls and... Oh, here comes, here comes a big wall in a cemetery made out of that, that stone. Look at the way they fit it. Look at the whole whole building here made ass stuff, Mike. It's hmm. exactly what they dug up uh, digging the graves, probably. Yeah. No shortage of it there. And I'm gonna shut you guys off till we uh, maybe we see that gas station. The chimney on that place. Oh, Mike. This guy's whole front yard is stone. Crazy. Crazy, buddy. It'd be funny if the town was called Stonewall. Look <laughs> <laughs> at the mountains. Wow. Look at him, Mike. I know. Little, there's a little stone. It's all the wild rock. Look at this, just uh, piles of boulders. Just, yeah, just piles and piles of boulders growing there. Sorry for the shake you came. I know you guys hate that, but uh, it is what it is. You know, I got a stabilizer. Wow, look at these houses down, down the valley, Mike. Yeah, we're up on the side of the mountain. Wow, this is New Jersey, you know? People think of North Jersey and everything, and, and they, look at this. More, more wild rock. Unbelievable. You know, when people think of North Jersey, they think, oh, what a what a shithole, what a, what a, what a crap hole. I almost cursed. Yeah. Caught yourself. Yeah, because up, up there, right where it comes out of New York, is, uh, you know, all your refineries and landfills and electric plants and you name it. There's a, there's a whole house made of that stone.
But then you get up here, and uh, Christ, every one of these houses got to be a million dollar home. Even the small ones. film on this uh, on these houses. Is that old gas station Mike? Look at it. All made out of local brick or block, whatever they call that stone. Field rock. Alright, uh, here's what we came up for. There's a couple things Mike's gonna get but uh, this here's an old international generator. It was just around and uh, they were just talking about it. It's got, got low hours for what it is. I think it might be military. It's got 4,800 hours. And uh, look how nice it is. It's not bent it up or anything like that. It's got a nice patina to it, but uh, it's an old international. Once we get it down, uh, Mike can talk about it. But uh, let me take a look around here. We'll see some interesting stuff. Old cranes. Oh yeah, that looks like a winch. Old Hercules winch. Pretty cool. Another Hercules powered something or other. Oh, here these. Uh, remember I told you the guy was working on something? These little uh, train cars or whatever. I think he had one up here too. Yeah. Little trains, but uh, let's go look at see a Euclid back here. They call these end dumps. I think he said this was a 1950 or something. A little tiny earth mover. Euclid. He's telling me the floor was all oak. I don't know how many how many inches of oak covered by steel. Old caterpillar grater. Yeah, I'm not gonna spend too much time on it because, like I say, he's got a lot of stuff here. And this is. This reminds me of when I was a kid, I used to have a sandbox, I mean a big 20 by 20 sandbox and uh, all my Tonka trucks were just like this. Oh, be careful road team, don't hurt yourself. Hi. Right. There's something interesting here, it's like a, a tow motor for an airplane or something. You gotta have to excuse some of the, the camera work because some of these areas are tight. But that's interesting. Don't know what year it is. But uh, all kinds of engines here. I've seen something back here that was really cool. I don't know uh, when some people think of a Mack truck. This guy has a, about a dozen of them. But the oldest ones you probably remember are like. There, that's an old B model. B mo we call it B model Max, and they use them for everything at one time. But uh, check this out. You're not even going to recognize it. This here is a Mack truck from the 1920s or earlier. And uh, there's their emblem on the front there. That looks a crank start too. But uh, they were, these were chain drives, and like we're in a, when they're in the quarries and stuff, I don't know if you can see that, but the, look at the size of that chain. But like we're in, when they were in the quarries and they were uh, driving up the, the hills and stuff like that, there would be a real low gear, and uh, that would get them out of the quarries. So after they got out of the quarries, what they would have to do is, when they're on level ground and, and uh, driving through the streets, they would actually have to change the sprockets and put a different size chain on, take some links out and stuff. Every one of them links is uh, held together with cotter pins. 
So it's uh, interesting, you know. To a lot of people, this looks like scrap. This must, you know what? This must have been a crane at one time, because from looking at the cab, you see the way half the cab is cut off. They would have the the crane coming right through the cab. Pretty cool. Look at this. Look at these axles. Big uh, equipment axles, truck axles, and heavy equipment. Engines, all kinds of engines. Dozers and a Buddha. He got himself a Buddha here. Transmissions and gears. Christ, it's just in scrap metal, this, thing's, this stuff is worth a fortune. There's aluminum tailgate. It's a lot of aluminum. Let's see if I can get a better look at this B model Mac here. B77. Interesting. All right. Here's something interesting I came across. Uh, wrecking balls. Any size. There's a big one, medium one, all the way down to a small one. He's telling me uh, some of these were used to take down uh, parts of the World Trade Center. Interesting. Interesting character. You ought to see some of, the, some of his hobbies in there. Like I say, he restores a lot of old Macs and cars. We need to see some of the cars and trucks he has if uh, we get inside. Mike uh, bought this. He's not going to take it. Is our buddy Mike and, and Rand, our buddy Rand. I think we're going to be movie stars. Yeah, yeah you are. Hey, you get, I want you to get yourself a picture and something that you can start handing out and getting autographs. You know, this, not to get off the subject, but this is a very interesting piece. Why are you talking about this <clears> here? Is that your last time? Yes. Okay. Um, I think the table and other stuff was in the way. But... If you study it for a while, the radiator is facing the dry operator, and you see this right here? Right, what, what is that? It took me a, a while to figure that out. Is that a heater? No. No? No, it's, a, it's, a, it's not the radiator. It looks like a condenser, but it's <laughs> the muffler. The muffler. That's a hell of a muffler, isn't it? Wow. Now that you know it's a muffler, you, you know, you see the exhaust pipe, it yeah. makes sense. But uh, I've it's never seen... It's very easy to steer because huh. it's solid rubber tires. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's chain drive in the back, going to a gearbox. It's got every form of power, you know, from a fan belt to a chain to a gear. And um, a guy came in here one day. <laughs> if you move it... Yeah, there you go. Um, and he looked it up on the computer. He finally found it on a computer, and it had a woman on it to sell it. Yeah. <clears throat> and it had a gang of trailers behind it, and they were going down a dock by boxcars. So it's, <clears throat> I guess, an industrial tug, you'd call it, inside of a building. Hmm. Looks like it has a rubber on there to push something, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was somebody's aftercourt, I guess, and the mm. tires. <clears throat> um, got the holes on for cushioning. In. A little bit of cushioning. Yeah. Right. Not quite solid, but close it's enough. It's about an inch, inch and a quarter of rubber there. Wow. It's amazing how they used to make stuff, huh? Oh, yeah. And even the engine. So the engine mounts, that's, that's interesting, too. Yeah. So the engine's just, that this whole thing is isolated. Here's something interesting here. It's a 150-ton hydraulic press. And look at the steel. Look at the eye beams, and it's all uh, riveted together like a battleship. And it even bent the things, that's how much power. You got a flashlight, Mike? Yeah, I think I see a name there. See that? What is it? Lackawanna. Lackawanna steel. That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. yeah all, all hot riveted. Huh. But that pulley, when they went to move it, I said, be careful when they weren't careful. Uh, I've got the rest of the pieces here, but mm. there's a foundry I deal with out in Pennsylvania. They're Amish. Oh, the cattail foundry out there? Yeah. Mm. And they're very good. And you give them the pieces and they pack it in there if you wanted to do it that way and then making the pull. Yeah, last time we were here. Here's something interesting. Let me get over here. A lot of you guys have probably never seen one of these. 
What's that up on the uh that generator there? Is that a Wisconsin? This is V4 Wisconsin. Oh, okay. I don't recognize the generator. You see these tires with the split rims and stuff? Because when you uh, blow them up, you got to worry about to not this. when you when you fill them up with air. There's a small one here, 50. but when you fill them up with air, they put them in this steel uh, cage because okay. if that the so ring it, pops it, off and blows, like it'll kill you, generator. literally kill you. Because them tires, you know, some of them have over 100 pounds in them. But uh, interesting. Yeah, if you ever fill one up with it without a cage, uh, you're, it's just uh, senseless. Pretty cool. Check out this vice. What size is my hand next to it? It's only it's only about a six inch vice, but the the rest of it's huge. Colombian, the Colombian, two oh six. Wow, thing's a monster. Look at that. Look at his device and his normal one, normal one back here. Looks looks like a baby. Yeah, he might book this, but uh, he's not going to pick us up now. He's got to come back with a special trailer. But uh, I think it's another Caterpillar generator. He loves his, he loves these big things, man. Yeah, there you go, Caterpillar. Look at the grill on this. Wow, quarter, at least quarter inch steel. It's not. It's, it's the grill to protect the, the radiator. Man, oh man. Mike loves his big equipment. Like I said, it's going to be another trip with a different trailer, so uh, you guys will enjoy that. What we got here? Oh, look at this. Look at Arbor Press here. What that thing's a monster. The old tank all riveted together. Interesting. A lot of heavy iron here. I need a carburetor for specific the V311. And the pony motor is missing. The size of these jacks, my god. They come up to my waist. Sorry, I gotta keep apologizing for the for the camera work, but uh, hey man, that's what we're dealing with here. I'm gonna try to try to get some videos of all the oddities here, but uh, Camera work's not going to be the best. Let me go grab a few more batteries in case we uh, lose power. This is a neat old GMC dump truck. When it looks at the lights, it's probably uh, 65, 66 maybe. I don't know. But uh, talk about patina. Six cylinder. Yeah. Look at it. Whoever had it at one time, you know, I guess they, they kept it looking good. You know, body filler on it. If it got a dent, they filled it and painted it. Very cool. Nice push bumper on there, too. There's something wild here. I don't know if you can tell, but that's... That's about 6 by 4. And it's a, a surface... Surface plate for machining and stuff. I think it's huge. That's got to be six inches thick. I don't know. Some of you machinists don't know what that is, but uh, it's nice and smooth. Hood, old hood for a, a B61. Looks in pretty good shape. I don't see any uh, vents on or anything. Whoa. Dude, the can just step in a gopher hole or something. Wow. Almost broke his foot. Wow, that thing went down far. Be careful, Road King. We can't lose you. Here's something interesting. It's a it's a wrecking ball, but it's round. Almost looks like a wheel. But then on the bottom, it's got the big big point there. 
You know, I guess that's for dropping on stuff. It's interesting. Oh, here you go. Something, something different. Mike was just telling me. Oh yeah, look at that. You got a supercharger on the side. That was in a. Who makes that supercharger? I forget. Oh, it's a Schweitzer. Huh. That was in a Gen set, and I believe the date. You know how to read the dates on these blocks? No. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't, that I don't want to look break your No, You're right. Well, I'll show you on another block in the back, but it's cast in the block. Okay. It might be behind here, but I'll show you on another engine over here. Mm. That might have been in a, in a small look, railroad looking over here. No, I, I, uh, that was a Gen 6 with the Oh, okay. Well, I thought, you know, you know, it might be, uh, diesel electric, you know. Oh, okay. I don't know. Just how you find out what year it is. This is 1962. See the... Oh, is that 112 or 11, 12, 62, it looks yeah. like? Yeah, okay. Huh, huh. Interesting uh, case, right? In the so it might be behind something that's on there. Right. But it'll give you a good idea, and of course... The tag is usually here mm -hmm. with some rivets, and I guess they also put the numbers underneath in case the tag gets lost, like this does. <laughs> and the earlier engines are brass. Oh, okay. Hmm. There's something interesting back here. Old, old trailer. The hard wheels on it, never like that. I guess I'm trying to get back here. Not getting hurt. Old Goodyear, hard trail, hard wheels. And look at that utility trailer, and I couldn't figure out what it was, what it was for. The carrying telephone poles. See, it's got like a little swell in the middle. I don't know what year, but uh, it's old. Wow, look at this tabletop. Hmm. Here's something interesting. It's, it's an engine, and I don't know what it's used for. Is that a generator? No, I don't know what that is. But anyway, the Sanderson Cyclone Drill Company. It's got an intake heater. It actually says on there. I've never seen that before. Well, this truck over there I brought back from Idaho, and that's a 335. And it's got the big spark plug. Is that the name of the engine, Cyclone? Yeah, they only made it for two years. Really? I've never heard of it. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, where do you, where do you get parts things. for that? <laughs> but if somebody's looking for that, if they use them in tractors or something, mm -hmm. that, that's available. It's right on the front of the radiator, too. I've seen that. Yeah, I've never heard of it before. Made, only made it two years. What, what was it used for? This guy was a well driller. Uh-huh. So it's got a flat belt pulley on, so I kind of think that they... A lot of times mm. they had deep wells. Right. And they would just... Obviously, use it to pump water. But, um, hmm. Wow. Yeah, it's an interesting engine on the, the superchargers if you want the tones. And they had it available, you go out crawling because it's got all the sons of Cyclone. Yeah. a nice old Willie's uh, hood so back here. Hiding behind everything, you won't even know it. He gave me the but I, on I was the, able uh, to stick my camera in here. I think it's a, a Willie's emblem. Some people call him Willis, so I have but I think I, I call him Willie's. I've got an aerial view here. It's an old, uh, you probably can't see it because it's dark down there, but it's, I want to call it a Mac, I don't know. I'll have to go down there and uh, read the side of it. Maybe a power wagon, a Mac or a power wagon, I don't know. But uh, maybe I'll get down there. Don't commit suicide. All right, I know. I was getting the aerial view. Oh, B model. Mac Fenders. A little brand new. That's Mac, too. That's probably a uh, new old stock. It's got this material. Interesting. In 4 by 8 sheets. Water. Yeah. Yeah. More over here. There's some neat old Lincoln welders. Lincoln 250 DC. I've seen about three or four of them. <laughs> They're popular here. 
Yeah. It's something you never run into. And I said, what do I, what do, I do? Throw the machine? Equipment back? for uh, doing lead work. The pipe. I might have told you. The tallow, the tinning, this tinning this butter. This way, this way. The lead the sticks. And uh, the file. Now, Mac huh. usually has some made of brass. So they just like the old trucks. Or the pipes are all straight. An instruction manual. No, the hoses are all straight. Interesting. So you just cut off what you need. Here's one of them uh, bombshell Lincolns. It's gonna plug it in. It's gonna plug it in. It's probably gonna sound like a bomb. <laughs> That's what he calling that. This lathe, about every hour, would stop. I dragged it out, and I had to change something in it because it was running on. About 30, 40? I'm going to say 40, 50. No. Oh. And the one behind you up on the... the it's the winding does, down. Wow. They don't make that anymore. Hmm. The uh, 500 amp. And I, I work for a guy. All right, you're going to try to put this big, big beast on here. Yeah. The four truck they got on here is about at its limits. That's why they got the chain so far back. Yeah, let's just take the end. Hmm. They're going to take the end and uh, drag it on yeah, there. Yeah, we'll drag it on. Mike's got a winch on the, the thing. That would be the safest way to do it. Is one end better than the other to pull it? Probably your end because the other end has got some sheet metal. Hmm. Yeah, it's you're right. I can probably wrap right around the jet the frame, so we'll, we'll put the radiator forward. And they're going to pull that thing up and uh, put it right between the, the ramps there. It looked like it, it moved a little bit. It looked like it moved a little bit, Mike, when I put my foot on it. Here we go, Mike. I'm going to put a little weight on there. There, I was hanging on the back of the machine, giving it a little extra weight. Now, Michael, right. hook a winch up that and pull it right up. Is a little sprint car. There's a difference between a sprint car and a midget, right, Rand? Correct. Sprint is longer. Really? They, oh yeah, yeah. I was, I was confusing them. Do, right. They used to cut them right here. Oh yeah. Push them out, and you, they'd have a V8 in them. Wow. What's the top speed of something like this? Depends upon the gears. Hmm. If you look at, you familiar with a quick change gear? No. <coughs> this is a solid axle straight across. Right. Behind that, you have a cover you can take off. And then you take two gears out just this quick, 
put another two in, put the cover mm -hmm. back on, and put oil on it, of course. <coughs> so everybody's got their little secrets going on with this field issue. And, uh, well, that didn't work. I, so, in fact, I, do I have the, no, I don't have the set here. But there's like 12 different gears. And of course, people cut their own. But I'm going to add it to take it too close. But <laughs> to answer your question, um, they were at the salt flats, and the guy was up around 150, but he had tires that came to a point. <laughs> he had the car, you know, really aerodynamic, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, 100, 120 is... <laughs> That's a lot in something like this. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> a shorter track, you're going to do 80, maybe, and if people get jammed up, but still, 60 miles an hour. Run this into a pole doing 30. Mm -hmm. uh, 30 miles an hour is very fast. Especially when you're only going around a half mile track. We you used know, you to can average work. 60 miles an hour on an eighth mile track with mm. a three quarter engine. And that's. Mm. And at that speed, the car will twist and the front wheel will stop turning. Mm. Oh, yeah, I've seen it go around and the front wheel's off the ground. Yep. Yeah. And if everybody pays attention, you'll see a lot of the wheel stops turning. Can I uh, jump in there? Here you go, Mike. Right. Get a picture of me. I can't. Wait a minute, that's a dollar, isn't it? Uh, where's, where's the uh, the coin box? Yeah. You should stand on the seat, man. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Look at him squeezing in there. Oh, man. Whatever. You make it? Brand is, Brand is 6'4". I don't know how he gets in here. Well, you take the steering wheel off. Oh. Oh. Well, now he tells me. Now we tell you. Well, that doesn't have a this quick disconnect be. steering wheel. That's oh. what I want to. He told me to take steering wheel. I want to talk about more. Looky in there. Oh, man. There's a button right in the middle. My foot's stuck between the brake and the floor. <laughs> and you, uh, you pop it right off. And it's very handy to have that if there's an accident and you want to get the guy out. Ah, okay. I don't know how you do this. Rand it at 120 miles an hour. Sometimes. Oh boy, you break it, you buy it. Oh, I don't know if I got room in the trailer. <laughs> man, oh man. I don't know if we're ever going to get out, Mike. Uh, we'll get you out. But you can take them home with the car. That's right, you can ride on the trailer just like that. <laughs> yeah. We'll bundle you up. You get stuck, you bought it. That's right. Oh man. Well, keep in mind, if you're, if you're racing, you've got a, a suit on. So he, he's not... Dressed like he is now. Yeah, exactly. And, you uh, slip right in there, huh? Oh, man. And usually... On the you step on that? Yeah. <laughs> the throttle pedal... All right, here you go. It's crazy, man. To stick your foot in so you can push down so you can release, you know, in case the gas valve gets stuck wide open. Okay. So you can force it off and you want like, fuel shut off right next to you in case the linkage breaks. Right, you can always kill it somehow. There's not much room in there. Got a figure for every. All right. All right let's well, go. Different size steering wheels, and you would wouldn't have all this clothing on. <laughs> or the stomach. And um, you'd be in better shape. <laughs> you rode yeah, one of these. A lot of times, you just make the car to fit you. Right. You, know, you bend pedals around, or whatever you have to do. And this is one that has the Offenhauser engine in it. Right? Yeah, sure. Oh yeah. Oh look at this. Wow. That. Uh, Twin overhead cam Hemi. Yeah. Um, Headless engine. And <clears throat> gear, 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 all the way down. Oh, okay. And that oh. Magneto. Let me get a picture of that up front. Little, little leather racing straps. Pretty cool. I, uh, that's an air for this time ago. Mm -hmm. How come my car's a little faster? Well, all because, <clears throat> I don't know, hmm. did that and then silver points in it. Very cool. Very cool, Rand. Okay. We got a lot we got a lot more to see. And you know what? I'm gonna take a leak while I'm up here. I'm well, just use the bathroom. There's something interesting too. That little sixty horsepower engine I don't know if it's like about a seventy eight. One of the, the, the originals. Calm, original four cylinder uh, gold, gold wing. Very cool. So, what do I want that for? So they, 22,000 miles on it. Early on, decided to block this tent. Hmm. Tent, huh, that's interesting. And 
Yes. Here's something interesting. I didn't mention it's a push bumper. These things don't have starters on them. That's right. Pretty cool. See that? It's a B a B model Mac. He's restoring. Um, funny story about that. But the guy had wrecked a couple of trucks, and I was after the truck, and the guys. By the time I got to it, I don't know what. The thing that amazes me about these is. <laughs> wow, look at that. Heavy build quality. Yep. And I told the guy it had a miss in it. And he was hauling mail. And they don't go for you're not getting where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be. He was running the turbo. And then I got a call. The truck stopped. Okay. Um, so I didn't want to rub it in, but I went down there and pulled it back. Right. And uh, I pulled it apart. In fact, the pistons in my office on a broken chip. And he. Uh, because I had a miss, raw fuel was getting in the cylinder from the injector, and um, it seized the piston. Mm. Yeah. A couple cabs up in the attic here. It's another. What is this, Plymouth? No. Mac. I don't even know what model this is. And here's something, something different. I think it's a Mac cab over. I don't know what year it is, but uh, here's something I know what year it is. This looks like a, a 31 pickup, Model A pickup. Here we go. Here's a unicorn. Rand, I'm going to need you to tell me about this. Let me see if I can get a good look at it. This is something you're never going to see. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Um, okay. A pickup, Mac pickup truck. Let me get a look I had at the five side. Of these at one time. Five of them. I didn't. I thought they only made five. They made uh, twenty six hundred eighty six. Twenty six hundred and eighty six of them they made. And supposedly at the beginning they were made for the dealers, but they didn't have. <laughs> that I know that many dealers. But. <clears throat> oh man! Thank you, Rand. Interior was done somewhere in its life. That's not correct. The headliner is not correct, but I got the right stuff in the back of the bed there. Hmm. Pretty cool. And look at the back the cab, here. Of course, it's the same as any bigger. That cab is the exact same cab. Huh? It's Interesting. Just the, you know, the fenders are smaller on this truck. You know, you see pickup truck, Mack pickup trucks of the people that they take the B models and make them yes. pickup trucks, but yes. this here is factory, factory pickup truck. Talk about a unicorn, and the tailgate here is held on with the piano hinge. Hmm. You stay there. All right. Can I show you this with a tailgate? I have the original sales literature, and they go into a great deal of detail about how this is hardened. But if you lift that up, All right? Now hold that tailgate. You got it. I think I do. Yeah, wow. And it's a piano hinge. Oh, and yeah, look at that piano hinge. Don't go back too far. I don't want you to hit that. Yeah. Now, when I lift it up, now I'm pushing on this side. Mm -hmm. Wow, look at that. Beautiful. I believe that the fenders, I believe, but I could be completely wrong about this, are 40 Ford pickup. Huh. Because that's interesting. It's quite common, and it's expensive to make that die for a fender. So yeah, right. If we can outsource well, that happened a lot back in the day, you know. Take a piece of this and a piece of that yeah. and make, and make something different. The bed is nothing but it's pretty simple. Yeah. Yep, yeah, just a And they had a cab channel. already, so really the only thing they had to do was wooden fenders. You think that was, that's the original floor? Well, if you look underneath, because it was Arizona. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So it could very well be. Very cool. The tail light uh, bracket is wrong, and that's the correct one. I've got a sandblast that huh. put it on. Interesting. You now it's cast iron. This. It looks a lot better than the. Yeah, exactly. So, the and Jeep. The same thing with the mirror. Or whatever that. Beautiful, beautiful piece. What do you get? A Dodge Power Wagon there? Yeah. That's, uh, what year is this uh, Mac here? 41. 
41, and they only made 2,686. And out of that, suppose, somebody said they made 500 pickups because they also had a flatbed and they were longer, right. uh, 16 inches. Um, but I, I can't verify that. Other what kind of engine would they have in that? This is, uh, well, <clears throat> I think he's going to open it this for is me. This is 12-cylinder. Um, Now, on the other side of this engine, and I'll open that side in a minute. Okay. What does that look like to you, if you know engines at all? This guy will know. Yeah, Mike will know. Looks like uh, Continental. Now, why is that cut like that? Somebody used a hacksaw on it? Hmm. No. Why is it cut? Well, they're to uh, prevent heat from going under the intake manifold from the exhaust? It's to allow for expansion contraction. Okay. Because the exhaust hmm. manifold is right there. Yeah. Interesting. They have issues with them cracking with those manifolds? Or maybe, or maybe they, they figured, let's not have it. Or issues problem. with warping and having intake leaks or something yeah. like that, maybe? I've taken manifolds and had the where the exhaust and the intake were one unit. Uh -huh. And this was warped from the heat. So I would machine it, this piece, back maybe 10 or 20 thousandths. So when you tighten it up, it hit the block first. Oh, okay. Then, then the exhaust. So it's it almost uh, tight against it. Uh, one thing, you know, later on, I thought this was a pickup. It's a, it's a four door. <laughs> Wasn't looking at the back. Oh, like this is the one that. What was it? Not, what was the deal with Continental the back? They're telling us. As far as I know, if I'm Continental and Matt comes to me and says we want a thousand engines made, but we'll give you the order provided. Now, in Arizona, there's three weather zones. Mm -hmm. People don't think of Arizona as having snow, but they do. And the block cracked right here. Underneath here, it'll have Mac script on the block. I have another one of these trucks that's a rust bucket that if I wanted to be a purist, I can pull that engine out so I have the we Mac script there. The, the engine is fine. Um, but yes, it is a Continental, but if you open this up and the truck's brand new, you'll see Mac script on there. You say, oh, it's a Mac engine. What is that precision engineering? What is it? That's what probably is it? The Re Oh, reconditioned. Okay, yeah. I see. We, we, we must have hmm. built it at some point. Okay. Having a uh, oil filter, according to the literature, is an option. Mm -hmm. And having a four-speed was an option. And these um, wheels being spoked for a little truck they're not Mac. Those are Clark forklift. <laughs> Front and rear. Hmm. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, so again, they put this truck together pretty reasonably. And you've got to remember, this was the Depression. So how can we put this truck together right. as inexpensively as possible? <laughs> and so, $635. Let me scoot back here, see so we got another, another B-model Mac. And what's this one? Hmm. I don't know if I could squeeze in here. Oh, the king's not as thin as he used to be. Brockway. Huh. <laughs> Gonna cost me more than fifty cents to get out of here. I'm stuck. You know, if it's order laying there, yeah, the corrugated stuff is hard. Yeah. And it's a very abrasive. Yeah, it's, 
It'll it'll carve metal. What year is this one, Rand? Uh, little, little, I think it's, I believe it's 22. 22. Wow. That's what he was trying to sell. They said it had restored an AB. Ah. And what's the deal with the headlights? I don't see any. Oh, they probably belong here on these brackets. No, I know no? where the headlights are because where this truck came from was out in Wooden Gap, Pennsylvania. And they took the headlights off of it hmm. and gave it to another guy. Like this. The other truck they were trying to sell didn't have it. So we'll ah. just take them off of this. And I know that I just have to get a truck. And I've got drum headlights, but the spacing is pretty wide on these. Mm. And these were... Are these the headlights here? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, this one's cool. What do you call it? Is it a C cab or something? Mm hmm Huh. Interesting. Very cool, man. You got a cool place here. And it's interesting... With it running, you can take the side cover off the engine and watch it crank run around. Oh, yeah. I got a question. You you would know, too. You know the old Brockways? They almost look identical to the Max, the cabs. Why why is that? Because, well, Mac bought Brockway in, I think it was around 75. Mm -hmm. Are you talking about earlier than that? Uh, No. No, that's about... It's, it's the... Yeah. Uh, it's the R model Mac cab. Right, right, exactly. And... The nose was a little different. They had right. a husky on instead. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that truck, let me get this right now. Hmm. Well, that one looks the old from the front. That's a 46. That's a 47. The little EEU is a 48. The Mac record's a 49, and I'm a 50. Wow. You got, one, you, got, you got a Mac from every year. But that Brockway's got a wood hmm. stiffener inside the cab. This Mac here? This green one? The Brockway. Oh. The inside of its wood. Okay. They had a torch lit. Hmm. I'm walking in the salvage yard. He's ready to cut the truck. And I turn the gas off. And the <laughs> guy's looking at his torch and looks back at it. And I'm standing there. And he said, did you shut those off? I said, yeah. Hmm. He said, what did you do that for? I said, because you're not cutting that truck up. It's not my truck, but, you know. Right. Was, to me, it was just too good to, to cut. And I got it started. And it runs fine. And it, uh, that's got a 427. This here, yeah, and um, it's not power steering, but you can go like this with your finger. It's barely moving. That's it. It's got mm -hmm. that much reduction, huh? <laughs> what a and collection! Here behind your head is all the dealers in the country. Huh? The paper's still in there. Pretty cool. Check this out—an old rotary phone. Here's an interesting, uh, the flathead, completely rebuilt. Got a nice little stand for it and everything. A little dark here, so I'm gonna try and light it up for you. But beautiful, even even the, the I don't know if you can see on a camera, but these wires are actually colored. Sometimes the light makes it worse than it is. Like the first one's red, second one's blue, green, yellow. Very cool. He's got everything in his place. And everything is all indexed so he knows exactly where everything's at. I was coming back from Chicago and I'm, of course, putting 10,000 miles on the car where it's probably, it was a 500 mile trip on him. And a guy had this air cleaner for this. And I got the fan. Hmm. Um, but I gotta make a something to hold the radiator on properly. Mm, right. But it's interesting the color code they use. <laughs> Red's here, blue is here, green, yellow. Get you in the right uh, 
Yeah, right. Coming out the right side. Yeah. There you go. And there's a, uh, a manifold that these all go in. Oh, okay. But, you know, God help you getting them all fished in there properly. Uh, so I just threw them on there to get the engine running. And what do you have back here, Cushman? That's a, uh, yes. Cushman four, four horse binder motor. Where the, you can take the valve out. Hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's a, you're familiar F, with that? It's a T, not a T head. It's an F head. Is it? Right. It's about the, it's about the, in, the, the intake valve cage above the exhaust. Yeah. You take the valve out here? Mm -hmm. Right, right. I had one, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, my, I think my first engine I ever bought was a. Yeah. Yep. Valve, cover back on. I think it was for a boat, this one. It's got a sprocket and a clutch on it. Hmm. Right. Hmm. Interesting. It's just a guess on my part. I had to pull it out of a building. Here's something scout craft might like. A dake. It's a, uh, it's a real dake. What is, what is this? Dake. About 50, 100, 50, 50 ton maybe? Pardon me? How, is it a 50 ton or something? 150. 150 ton. Well, that's close. And uh, why don't you pack your pants on the forks? Uh -oh. The grease on the oh, oh, I see. Um, that's, my new, that's my new electric jacket, too. I don't want to do that. So you don't have a. 100, 150 ton dake. Huh. Very and good. It didn't work. Very cool. And um, there's a little brass plug mm. there on the side. That's for the oil. Wow. Yeah, that's, a, that's a press. Six sides on. So you can get around. Haven't needed it yet, so you haven't done it yet. Yeah, well, exactly. Is that a generator, Mike? It is. Wow. That was in a greenhouse on the other side of the mountain here, and the guy says, oh, we'll get it out with our attractor, maybe the size of an 8N. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, all right, go ahead. And then I get a call. I can't get it out. Um, Jersey. Um, so that's just a stock reducing cone. Yes. Yeah, just a stock part. Yes. All right. Wow. There's another house, Michael. Made of stone. <laughs> even he got a brick wall. You got a stone wall around the house too. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I know. I know some of the the photography work wasn't the best. You know, a lot of bumping and and dark and everything else and. A lot of stopping and starting, but uh, you know that's that's what we're dealing with here. So uh, it is what it is. That's raw footage. That is. That's uh, that's uh, we take it as it comes, and that's the way it came. So uh, I don't know how long this video is. If we get a little time, and Mike has time, and it's not too uh, cold out, maybe we'll uh, take a walk around that engine. If not, and uh, we'll show it to you when it gets down to Mike's house, and he starts working on it, or just looking it over. So. All right, we'll see you guys later unless we see something. We say, Mike, enough of this. Enough of this. All right. Like I say, if we see something, we'll throw it in there. But uh, I think for the most part, once we hit the turnpike, it's uh, clear sailing. All right. See you guys later.